it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, uh, to introduce to you Trace Cooper from the Education Unit in Cork Prison, Professor Maggie O'Neill of Criminology and Sociology in University College Cork, and Dr. Katrina Swarick, who is also a college lecturer in the Department of Sociology and Criminology at University College Cork. This project that we are launching today is a booklet uh, entitled Visual Thinking for Convivial Learning in Cork Prison. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Centre for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning. My name is James Cronin and I'm a lecturer in the Centre. And what I want to do in this uh, opening session is really introduce you to the booklet, uh, give you the kind of rationale, the idea behind it. We will also have a conversation between um, myself and Trey's and Maggie and Katrina talking about um, the ideas that inspired the project. And then we're gonna have an interactive Padlet, which is an opportunity for you to engage with the artworks yourself, and then have a wider conversation around some of the themes that emerge. So as you see here, the table of contents, a uh, brief introduction by Trey's on the application of visual thinking within uh, Cork Prison, within the studio practice of the educational unit. Um, then there's a more extensive essay by myself in thinking about how we negotiated the learning partnership, really what the focus of the conversation is today. How do we develop this convivial pedagogy? And that's really what the essay is, is engaging with and, and thinking about some of the strategies that you have to engage in, in negotiating with a learning partnership between uh, traditional learners, traditional learning experience and non-traditional learning um, experience. So what I want to do here is, is just in the next few slides, just show you some of the approaches that we took. So I think it's very important to reflect on the sense of hopefulness that needs to be inculcated within such a group um, because um, I mean, we all have faced, because of the pandemic, um, lockdown, isolation, um, and, and, and that's been very hard for many people in terms of mental health and well-being. But this is an isolation that's very, very different, because this is um, absolute removal of freedom, um, and the only space of agency is the space in your head is the space of possibility within the studio practice. So the process of art making is itself um, a space and a point of liberation. And that's really what we were um, engaging with when we were thinking about a convivial um, pedagogy. It's important uh, always to remember that in this booklet is the voice of the student. Um, so again, notice uh, that they, they enjoy the process. So again, enjoyment. When we think about learning, if you learn um, well, it's often because you enjoy something. Uh, so enjoyment is central, I think, to learn. Um, and then he says that, that the work was therapeutic. Um, and again, think about what therapeutic means in this context for an incarcerated student. It often means literally allowing them time in their physical space and in their head space to get away from confinement, to forget uh, where they are, to get lost in the moment, to become immersed within the learning. Um, again, this echoes the work of people like Mikhail Chensent Mihai, the notion of flow theory. Um, again, Chensent Mihai's notion of flow is that you know, when you're, when you're lost in the moment, when you're engaged in the moment um, of learning, um, when it is enjoyable, literally hours can melt away. They can dissolve and feel like seconds. And that's what we were trying to do in this space is give them that capacity to lose themselves in the art so that they can reclaim some of their own sense of self, of well-being, of worth and of subjectivity. Now, in, in terms of the learning design, at the center of the learning design, what we're thinking about is where is the learner? 
uh, where's the learner going and how do we get there? And that was continuously um, the dynamic that we were thinking about myself and Trey's as, as we were structuring each of these courses. And why the artful thinking tool from Project Zero is so useful is that it argues that the same type of dispositions that you use in uh, logical and critical reasoning in terms of numeracy and literacy can also be applied through the visual arts so that you have reasoning, you have exploring different viewpoints, you have finding complexity, you have comparing and connecting, you you have observing and describing, and you have questioning and investigating. And what this does is it priv privileges, it, 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 in fact, it doesn't privilege any particular method, but what, what it does do is it says that there are other ways of demonstrating intelligence. And if you know the work of Howard Gardner, that's exactly what Gardner was doing. He was suggesting that there were other ways in which you can represent intelligence. You know, often when we think of intelligence, we simply think about numeracy and literacy. We don't think of all the other possibilities of how you represent intelligence. Often this is seen as creativity. And what we're suggesting here is that creativity is a form of intelligence and it needs to be scaffolded in much the same way as you scaffold other types um, of activities. Uh, was there anything there, Maggie, that, that you, well, that resonated with you and that you would like to maybe respond to in the, in the first instance? Yeah, um, I think, first of all, you know, when I looked at the Padlet and I, it was, you know, a, a great um, return of my first memory of going into Cork Prison uh, to meet Adele and Trace um, and some of the guys who then joined the Inside Out group with Katerina and Katerina can talk to that. But I was completely blown away by the work, very moved by it. Um, and, you know, just coming back to your point uh, about Illich, you know, okay. and, uh, you know, what we mean by conviviality and tools for conviviality, uh, particularly in education, you know, um, for Illich, um, you know, people should not be slaves to tools or technology or oppressive governance systems, but creativity and imagination should be the lifeblood of society. And I think what you and Trace have done is, you know, connect the kind of transformative pedagogic mm -hmm. aspect of the kind of teaching and learning that you both do and that Sertel does mm -hmm. uh, with the transformative role of art and creativity. Um, and I really, um, I really love this, this, you know, this use of language tray that you use about thinking and images, um, because I think that, you know, that kind of, um, it speaks to the transformative role of art, you know, that it isn't just a fabulous way, creativity and imagination and working through the arts are not just a fabulous way of learning, of teaching and learning, but they're also, you know, the things that you mentioned, James, you know, therapeutic, relational, engaging you know that we learn and we get lost in the moment um but also you have produced in this body of work you know dignifying representations of uh, of people who are you know often othered stereotyped and i think it challenges the dominant stereotypes as well as open the way for you know for us to think about these this form of learning in the university um, because, you know, a university is a community dedicated to learning and personal development, just as a educational, you know, the education wing or, educa or educational sphere of a prison. Um, and so I think we have a lot to learn both in the university, but actually in other institutions as well, <laughs> mm. which I think was what Illich hoped for, you know, that it wouldn't just be education, but, you know, transforming society into a more... Um, sort of social relational justice oriented um you know way of being and doing thank you maggie um trace uh, i'd be very interested um to hear from you in terms of how do you think the lads responded to the work so just to give people a sense what what i would do is i would go in there for um you know a half a um, an after half an afternoon, uh, say on a Monday afternoon, um, we would have a little talk, we would have co coffee and biscuits, they'd have um, a conversation. Um, and then um, it was an opportunity for them to work during the week with trays, in a, you know, taking the ideas that maybe I had introduced them to, and then think uh, more deliberately uh, on that throughout the, the week. So Trace, would, would you like to tell us a little bit about that process, please? 